Last week, TechCrunch uh, reported that Warner Music is acquiring IMGN, a social media publishing platform, for under uh, $100 million. In the article, they say, Warner, meanwhile, does not plan to use the platform to simply market Warner artists, but to tap it for more insights into where people are going online these days and what they want to see so that it can better target its own marketing efforts accordingly. Here with his thoughts on this, Sam Tall. Sam, how you doing? I'm good, Peter. Great. So Warner, you know, while Warner has invested and acquired startups in the past, what makes this interesting to me is like how labels are now looking outside normal music distribution channels to where people are discovering music. And, you know, there's a right. lot going on and outside the music realm for these majors. So, you know, what are your thoughts on this? So it's, it's interesting because uh, they have Songkick, they have Uproxx, uh, and they have now IMGN and probably some other stuff that I'm forgetting. I think it's telling that, you know, Warner made the point of, of letting TechCrunch know that it's not going to be a marketing vehicle for Warner Music. Obviously, you know, when you have popular TikTok channels or popular Instagram channels, paying for the placement of a song and promoting that song is very valuable, but it's not like 80 to 100 million dollars valuable, you know? So I think, you know, the, the, the idea that this is a way for Warner to keep their sense of what's on the cusp or what's, you know, what's new and what's trending in terms of topics and tre and fads and challenges and all kinds of stuff happening on TikTok and Instagram. That's super powerful insight that then they can, you know, use to kind of steer unorthodox marketing efforts. But I don't know that it's going to be a one-to-one -one fit. I think I've said this before. The way that music is being used on TikTok or being found on TikTok by virtue of A&R, that's it's just the latest iteration of a thing we've been doing for ages, whether it's Instagram singers or Vine singers or YouTube singers, et cetera. So I don't think that that's necessarily the way that we're going to build a, a future industry. There's got to be some other data play here, just like there was with Uprox, um, that we're going to probably not see for a while yet. Well, what's really interesting about this and you know what I like is the fact that the, you know, Warner is these labels, you know, they're publicly, you know, publicly traded now. So it's not just money revenue. It's they look, they need other revenue opportunities and they need to be able to, you know, they have to answer to their investors now. So when they have their you know earnings reports and financial reports and, you know, the Everything that they have to do now is not just relying on music. So, the you know, it's what are they going to be doing to find out? Like you're talking about TikTok, and it's finding out where people are. And you know, it's kind of like you can right. assess, you know, kind of access their endpoint and where they're going. And if you can follow that trend, then you can figure out a way to get you the music, not necessarily to get people to Spotify or Apple to a streaming platform, it is to get that into the next TikTok, the next Reels, the next uh, whatever, you know, next week's social right. media platform du jour is. I mean, Columbia has been really aggressive about signing hit singles off of TikTok. Um, I have conversations about this all the time at Studio 71 about artists that are potentially social media stars that we might want to work with for various purposes, but they're already tangled up in a Columbia Records or RCA deal. Atlantic, I'm sure, would love to play part of that game as well, which you know leads to Warner wanting to have you know first hand or first look at uh, you know songs that are popping off in a in a Daquan post or something like that. Um, I think we can't forget the fact that despite Warner going public again, that it's still almost exclusively controlled by Access Industries, right? And Len Blavatnik is very passionate about building this full stack company. So I don't know that, you know, I think, I, well, I think the price is probably right for a company like this. I think the value, the direct revenue is going to be a matter of brand placements, label placements, and that kind of like, you know, bought spots as opposed to you know, UGC advertising, et cetera, the way that it is on YouTube. Um, but I think Warner has a, has a hill to climb when it comes to seeing press releases like from Spotify saying that Universal is the most technologically advanced partner that they have. And Warner's probably not 
too pleased with that, especially considering Len Blavatnik is building one of the most uh, cohesive organizations in the music business and is going to go toe to toe with Liberty Media at some point once they kind of, you know, build their arsenals. Well, you know, I, I think there's something there where it's like really interesting talking about, you know, technological advances and Warner stepped into the gaming market. So, you know, and I talk about gaming quite a bit and that's, and, and now you see what's going on with Epic and Apple and Epic versus Google. And you know, there's going to be this battle between the gaming uh, producers, the distribution channels, and then the music. And it goes back to Bezos with Amazon owning Twitch. And there's so, but to be able to get into that market there is going to be a really interesting place. I mean, we've got, you know, Twitch not licensing music. We've got video games not making it to the app store. We've got all kinds of, you know, entertainment IP issues that I'll, I'll be honest, it feels a little like we're approaching a, you know, intellectual property world war that's played out in the courts where it's it's various parties, you know, demanding various mm -hmm. things that are all interconnected but unique and and nobody's happy. <laughs> 